I'm Warren Davinsky. I direct the NYU Epilepsy Center. Medicinal cannabis is plant-derived medicines from the cannabis plant, which could be cannabis sativa or cannabis indica, or more likely some interbreeding between those two species. And depending on the strain, it's going to contain various quantities of cannabidiol or CBD and tetrahydrocannabinol or THC. The CBD is not psychoactive and does have anti-seizure properties in a variety of animal models and in human trial data. And the THC is psychoactive. It produces the high that's associated with cannabis or marijuana use. And it's also been studied and is effective in many animal models of epilepsy, but it has not yet been tested in humans with epilepsy. What we know now about the effectiveness of cannabis is really restricted in humans to cannabidiol or CBD. And what we have data for that shows it does work is Dravet syndrome and Lennox-Gastaut syndrome, two relatively uncommon and severe epilepsies that begin in childhood. We also have some evidence that in focal epilepsy, CBD does not appear to be effective, although I don't think the jury's out. I don't think that study is the last word. But the initial indications are that CBD is not going to work for every disorder, and it's worth emphasizing that for Lennox-Gastaut and Dravet syndrome, overall, when the drug was added to three other approved anti-seizure medications, the average reduction in convulsive or drop seizures was about 25% over placebo. So it's not a wonder drug. There are some people, a few, who have dramatic responses, but the majority of people who respond have modest to mild responses or reductions in their seizures. I can't emphasize how important it is for us at this stage in medicine to obtain more rigorous and scientifically controlled trials to understand both the safety and the effectiveness of cannabis products like CBD and THC for different epilepsies. Epidiolex is a 99% CBD preparation derived from cannabis sativa plants by GW or Greenwich Pharmaceuticals in the United Kingdom. It is a oil-based product because all of these cannabinoids are very fat-soluble, so they have to be given with a fatty uh, solution, in this case an oil. And it has been effective in Dravet and Lennox-Gastaut syndromes. It is also being tested in a rigorous trial for tuberous sclerosis syndrome, but that trial has not yet been completed and the results are not known. Epidiolex has recently been approved by the Food and Drug Administration of the United States. I was able to testify at that meeting, although interestingly the FDA was quite favorable about the drug based on extensive data from the trials that were done and their own assessment of its safety and, and efficacy. So it is an exciting time. I don't know when Epidiolex will make it to the shelves of pharmacies in the United States. I have many patients on it from the trials but there are many more who I think can benefit, and hopefully it will get to pharmacies soon. I think there are real concerns with the use of cannabis in an unregulated and often unsupervised way. We do know from the trials that we did that there are serious side effects, and that the number of patients who left the trial because of serious side effects were far greater in the epidiolex treated group than in the placebo group. Some of those can probably be reduced by using lower doses of the medication, and some by knowing which drugs, like valproic acid, when used with valproic acid, CBD has a higher rate of liver function test abnormalities. And when used with clobazam, it may be related to higher rates of sedation or somnolence. So, so there's a lot that we know, but probably a lot more that we need to know about both where it works best, the doses it works best, and which patients may be most vulnerable to side effects. Having been one of the people who started assessing and testing medical cannabis, I see many people in my New York and New Jersey offices who are extremely interested in medical cannabis, and I believe there are a large number of misconceptions among lay individuals. Number one is that it's an extremely effective drug across many epilepsies, and that's just not true. 
in Lennox, Gastel, and Dravet, as I said, when it's added to three drugs, it has a modest effect. In other disorders like focal epilepsy, which is the most common type of epilepsy in the population, the initial studies don't look like it has efficacy. In addition, it is a drug. When you take hundreds of pounds of plants and you distill one compound from many compounds and you put it into a concentrated form, that is a drug. And indeed, it is a drug that has benefits and it is a drug that has side effects. Many people would like to use only cannabis and we just have zero data at this time that that would be a wise decision. I know in America there are many patients who come to me who say, I now know I need to start medications because I've continued to have seizures. I was hoping I could sleep better, avoid alcohol, and not have seizures, but I, I've still had them, so I need to be on medication. I'd like to use CBD. And I would say, as I do, no, that's not the right decision for you. I try to counsel my patients to be wary of what they read, and I, and I say this not to be facetious in any way, but you could easily find a thousand people on the internet who say they were picked up by a UFO and interacted with aliens who did something to them or spoke to them and then let them go again. Uh, it doesn't mean any of those people are telling the truth. I'm not saying they're lying. Some of them may have psychiatric disorders. Some of them may have had a dream and believed it occurred. But the fact that people say it and people believe it doesn't make it true. And the way I like to phrase this is that in science, we can be incredibly empowered by strong data and evidence, but there's always doubt. And I have tried to have doubt about everything. Um, I understand I have to make decisions as a physician, and I try to counsel people about risk-reward benefits. And I decided to go into this area of research because there was a lot of animal data, because there were patients with epilepsy who reported positive findings. And so based on that, I didn't believe it worked, but I believe it might work, and I felt it was worthy doing the double-blind trials, and I'm extremely happy that they were positive. But the groups for which we have scientific data is one or two percent of the epilepsy population. It's tiny, and we need to get more data. There's a strong belief that people have, it's an intuitive one, that if something is natural, it's safe, and if it works, it's far preferable to something that's made by a drug company. And that may well be a good thing, certainly for myself. I believe in the idea that foods you eat, if you have to look at the ingredient list and there are chemical names on there that you can't pronounce or don't know, there are probably things that would be best left uneaten for your own health. Having said that, many things that are natural are dangerous. Swimming with sharks, poison ivy, puffer fish, tetrodotoxin, those things can easily kill you. So there are many natural things that can kill you. And there are many natural things that have no benefit. And perhaps the greatest danger, for example, would be a parent or an adult with epilepsy who decides that cannabis is natural, it's therefore safer than other drugs, which it may be, it may not be. We don't really have great comparative data, but I think it probably is safer than some. But what we absolutely don't have is that it's more effective. And one of my areas of research interest, other than cannabinoids, is sudden unexplained death in epilepsy and, or I should say, sudden unexpected death in epilepsy. And for people with SUDEP, uh, that's a horrific risk. And in the United States, it happens at least 3,000 times a year. So if, if a parent of a child with a severe epilepsy or a patient with mild epilepsy decides, I would rather take a natural product, they could have a single convulsion in sleep or at the breakfast table or showering, and they could die from that. And in that case, cannabis will have contributed to their death because they could have been put on lamotrigine or many other effective drugs and not had that seizure and been alive. So we need, we need to think long and hard, and I don't have all the answers, but at least I know I don't have all the answers. Having treated now well over 500 people personally with medical cannabis, my recommendation would be it should never be a first-line drug for any disorder at this point. I think its use should be as much as possible limited to very treatment-resistant cases that didn't respond to a number of the approved medications alone or in combination, and that it does have side effects. And if you do use it, your 
physician should know about it because there are important interactions with other medications that could lead to serious harm and that the patient and the physician need to work together and communicate uh, and that it's not a panacea. In the double-blind studies, the number of people who were seizure-free for a long period of time was extremely low. So it, I think it will have a place in epilepsy care. I think we've shown that. But to date, it's a very small group of people with epilepsy. And we need a lot more data to inform us about treatment for the rest of the majority of people with epilepsy.